On Saturday, the Economic Freedom Fighters launched its election manifesto at the Moses Mabida Stadium in Durban on Saturday. Now hundreds of EFF supporters turned out to hear the party's policies in the event, uh, you know, should it be elected to power in South Africa this year. This preceded the announcement of the election date that President Cyril Ramaphosa is soon to make. Good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we're joined in studio by the Economic Freedom Fighters Member of Parliament, Mzwane Lemani, to talk to us about the manifesto launch of the party that uh, happened at the weekend uh, in Durban. He's here with us in studio this evening. Mr. Mani, much appreciated for coming. Good evening. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tabo. And uh, good evening to your viewership. And let's correct something very quickly. It was not hundreds, it was thousands. Thousands of supporters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's fine. Much appreciated yeah. for, for, for that. Thousands of supporters. Let's talk about those supporters. Yeah. Where are you expecting those numbers? Well, look, we, 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 we know that we've got support uh, in the KZN area. We just wanted to do this for nobody else but for South Africans because people have been doubting the, um, uh, the strength of the EFF in KZN mm. and also with the emergence of the various new parties which you know people thought, ah, well, that's the end of EFF. So we deliberately went there uh, just to make a point, two points really. One, that the EFF is not some tribalistic organization located in Pulukwane or anywhere, that it is a national organization, we've got a national footprint. And uh, so we made sure that uh, the province is the only place that uh, should actually make sure that the stadium is full. And indeed, the province rose to the occasion and uh, the stadium was full. Because I was about to ask that, that you know, um, how you got to choose uh, KZN, uh, Devon in, 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 in particular. I mean, we know that the EFF, you know, has support, as you said, all over the country. Uh, but the significance of choosing that province this is the one province, you see, because some, there are many tribalists uh, in this country that they thought that because president of the EFF uh, speaks uh, uh, Pedi, uh, that uh, he's, he's, he would not have not any support base in KZN because he doesn't speak Zulu. Uh, well, he does manage Zulu, but yeah. he's not very fluent in Zulu. Uh, so they thought because he's not a Zulu-speaking person uh, per se, Therefore, it's not going to be a strong base in KZN. So we want to prove that, that no, this organization is not a tribal organization. You can go to Eastern Cape, you'll find the EFF very strong. It doesn't matter where you go. So we wanted to prove that point, really, that we're not a regional party. We're national. Mm. Uh, and when we say national, it's not this or that other province. It's all provinces, uh, as it is. So that's really the point that we wanted to make. And we think we've made that point uh, emphatically very well. You look at the support of the EFF, I mean, you know, and I was so interested in finding out from you uh, as the party, the choice of the national anthem. It, you know, it's, it's the national anthem that we usually, we used to sing it back in the days uh, in the country. Why that national anthem as the EFF and not the, the one that is mixed with the, the different languages? Look, we, I think the EFF is the most politically astute organization in South Africa, and we are the most honest. We, our view is that the rest of the lyrics in that uh, uh, national anthem of South Africa actually, um, uh, what you call it, uphold apartheid, uphold colonialism. Uh, and this is what we are against. We are an anti-imperialistic organization. We are pro-Africa uh, as, as the EFF. So we therefore do that which speaks just to Africans uh, as it were. And we're not about to glorify apartheid with their stem. We're not about to glorify the crown with the uh, elements of God save the queen stuff. Mm. That's not us. Uh, those are all oppressive things. When those people were singing those songs at their time, the stem, it's triumphalistic songs, songs of conquer. So if you sing that song, Actually, you are actually submitting to conquer. We don't want to submit to that. We are saying they could have done that to the various grandfathers uh, mm -hmm. of the Africans. But right now, the EFF is here to say we are back to change things. We are back to reassert ourselves as Africans. We are back to make sure that uh, 
uh, the indigenous population of this country uh, takes its rightful place. Let's talk about the State of the Nation Address uh, mm -hmm. before we get into the manifesto in its entirety. The EFF did not attend the uh, SONA. Uh, we know of the court order, obviously, uh, you know. Um, um, so I, I want to understand, you know, the reasons behind. Was it more of a solid, solidarity to uh, the leaders uh, that were cited on the order, or you just wanted to just, uh, you know, not attend, as you've been saying that, you know, it is a talk shop after all. No, look, the EFF is a very serious organization. We're very serious about governance. We're very serious about uh, zero corruption. Now, when you have a situation where the president of the country is mired in all kinds of controversies, including the issue of hiding money under the mattresses and all of that, now, if you protest against that, and you get arrested, you get uh, persecuted, like our leadership uh, was persecuted. Uh, and then next thing you say, uh, you make all kinds of laws that um, uh, some quick fix uh, uh, parliamentary laws that are going to say, mm -hmm. if you raise a point of order, uh, you'll be arrested, basically, uh, that kind of a thing. So it means, therefore, you have, you, you, you have risen, you have actually not risen, you have descended to apartheid-like tendencies to suppress freedom of expression. Parliament is supposed to be the most freest place. We've got all kinds of uh, uh, laws in Parliament uh, the, uh, that, that gives, like Parliamentary Privileges uh, Act and all of that. Those are special privileges that we can say anything uh, in Parliament and they're protected by those. Now if you're going to have all kinds of other laws to restrict and to confine those uh, to undermine what is already in existence, uh, what we think are doing. So, in other words, Ramaphosa can do as he pleases. And when he comes there to address the nation and want to hold him accountable, now we've got all kinds of uh, uh, laws that says, no, you can't. Let him just say whatever he wants to say. So he's the only one. Uh, it's actually mm -hmm. dictatorship of a special kind, where he's the only one that is allowed to speak and say anything that he wants to say, and uh, he cannot be challenged. If you challenge him, you're breaking the law. I mean, what nonsense is that? So the EFF, the entire uh, organization, all of us, we felt that, uh, no, we cannot going to go and uh, go and listen to nonsense uh, and all of that. And as you can see, after he said whatever he said, what was the takeout? We still continued. Uh, he continued with his lies. I hear that he was saying something about, uh, we didn't listen to his speech, but we heard that uh, Wise was even delivering this thing, uh, talking about... Uh, electricity, that uh, they've managed to deal with load shedding, even was, was, was saying that the load shedding strike him, just, just shows that the ANC has lost control of the country, has, has, has lost control of governance, uh, as it were. So I think the people of South Africa have got no choice but to remove them. These people are tired. Mr. Manye, I want us to park it there. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, we get into uh, some of uh, the uh, points there that were made, uh, rather the promises that were made by uh, the party leader, the Julius Malema, during the manifesto this weekend. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are still unpacking the Economic Freedom Fighters Election Manifesto uh, with uh, the party's uh, Member of Parliament, that's Mzwane Lemani, who's still in studio with us. Mr. Mani, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, I want to get into the manifesto. I mean, quite, uh, you know, bold promises and ambitious targets. Um, I know this, you know, you had themed the manifesto, you know, our land, our jobs, you know, stop load shedding there. But let's talk about the manifesto itself at first. Do you think that it has resonated with the people of this country? Let's first correct something once again. Uh, the CIC of the EFF, our president, did not make any promises. He made commitments. There's a fundamental difference. The person that makes empty promises 
is Ramaphosa. He's a guy that said he's going to build a million houses. He has not built even one of those houses. So that, those are empty promises. So we don't make empty promises in the EFF. We make commitments. So indeed, uh, the CIC made firm commitments and they were all commitments that have been seriously worked out to make sure that they are realistic. And we think uh, that uh, they resonate uh, to your question. They resonate with the people of South Africa. We got a lot of good feedback uh, and all of that. And, uh, and, and as you can see, media generally is negative. They didn't even have anything negative to say. Uh, I saw the headline, one of the newspapers saying uh, the EFF invaded uh, KZN and all of that. Yeah, but in terms of the substance, our substance is top of the pops. Mm. Let's talk about load shedding. I mean, yeah. uh, you, uh, you know, we are currently on stage six load shedding yeah. as a country. I'm not sure if there's a revised outlook yet. But um, the EFF has made commitments yeah. that it would solve the issue of power cuts in six within months. a space of six months. Correct. Maybe explain that. To how do you have a plan in place as the party? Yeah, it's a very simple one, by the way. The installed capacity of uh, electricity in South Africa is something like 46,000 megawatts. Mm. So that's what we have. The country right now is using somewhere around 26 or so uh, megawatts. Yeah. So already we've got huge reserves uh, that, that are out there. So, but the energy availability factor is very low because these people, uh, they switch these machines on and off as they want. Uh, the whole load shedding that we have today has got nothing to do with anything technical. It's all manufactured. When you've got a Rugby World Cup, they know that everything must work, everything works. When, but when you've got the EFF rally, then all of a sudden things don't work. So it's all political machinations. So when the EFF takes over, we'll remove politics out of electricity generation and make sure that uh, people of South Africa get the electricity they deserve. We have enough base load uh, in this country. I mean, even the issues of renewables, as much as we don't have a problem with them uh, ideologically, but uh, truth be told, we don't even need them uh, because we have enough base load uh, capacity. Yeah. Our coal in this country has got uh, a lifespan of well over 200 years. So we can be on coal for the longest of time. So when you say that it's um, you know, it's manufactured. Yes. What do you mean? Do you mean that uh, there are people within ESCOM that are actually orchestrating this yes. in order to make sure that uh, we are not having a functioning it's political, electricity grid? It's political decisions. The good working people of ESCOM, they want to do their job, but they get all kinds of instructions and directives to do certain things. Because Ramaphosa and his ministers, they have made all kinds of... Uh, uh, and uh, misguided commitments everywhere else because we want to create artificial space for the renewables. They have signed up a whole lot of renewables at a heavy cost to the country. Now they have to give these renewables something to do. So for those renewables to have a role to play, we have to switch off uh, perfectly operating plants. I mean, it's a, it's a mess. I mean, one of the uh, plants, is it Kendall, where was it Komati plant, but one of the plants yeah. They switched off a, uh, a 1,000 megawatt, pack, uh, me megawatt uh, a plant only to replace it with uh, renewables that were pushing only 250, uh, which just shows that there is no thinking, there is no science, it's just political machinations. All of these things are, are things just to, to achieve certain political agendas uh, and commercial deals that they've done uh, for themselves. It's got nothing to do with the interest of building the economy of this country. They are collapsing the economy of this country uh, by uh, doing these shenanigans with the electricity. Let's uh, you know, talk about other uh, uh, you know, commitments that uh, the EFF has made. Education, social assistance, you, know, you spoke about increased social grants. We know that uh, previously <coughs> the EFF has spoken about increased uh, social grants there. Uh, there's also the new graduates fund that also the EFF uh, has made commitment uh, about 1,000 rands for those that have metric and 3,000 rands when you have a degree. Also, let's touch on that. Where is the money going to come from? Firstly, let's say that the point there, before you missed the point about that thing, yeah. the point there is really that if you are educated, 
you shouldn't have to not to have a job. Yeah. Uh, that's the first point to make. The EFF is saying it's an embarrassment uh, to have what we had today, uh, that people with the uh, MBCHPs are walking the streets. Uh, the other day it was lawyers and all of that. So, so how are you going to motivate your children uh, if doctors, I mean doctors in, the, in, the, in, the, in our townships are very important people, in fact everywhere, but in the townships in particular even more, doctors and lawyers. But if you can have those people with LLB degrees and all of these uh, fancy degrees and they still don't have a job, how do you say to a child go to school? So the EFF is saying as a stopgap measure, we will make sure that all those graduates uh, that have been denied jobs by the ANC government, that they have something to live for. And as you get more qualified, the money it gets more. But we know that uh, whatever that is, it's a stopgap mechanism. Mm -hmm. These people will get jobs. So what are we going to do as the EFF to make sure that we manage this stopgap mechanism? One, th one thing that we'll do firstly is to increase corporate tax, is to also get into the wealth tax. We can't have corporates that are criming it, uh, only being taxed at only 24, 28%. We bump that up to 32%. And then we've got the resources that we need for all of these things. So I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, I want to hear about your plans as we are heading to the elections. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show as we continue zooming in on the Economic Freedom Fighters Election Manifesto. Mr. Mani is my guest this evening. Uh, Mr. Mani, let's talk about the uh, multi-party uh, agreements and all these kind of things that have been happening as we are heading to the elections. We know that they left you out as the EFF. I'm not sure if they did approach you to join um, the, 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 the multi-party chart as the EFF. But uh, I mean, we've seen that uh, there's somewhere bad, bad blood, if I may put it that way, between the opposition, which is the DA, and then you guys. No, I think the first point to make is that the minute, minute we have that pact, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an admission that any one of those parties knows that on their own, they're not going to make any dent. So therefore, they need what they're doing. The EFF right now, how we're postured is that we're looking at real numbers. We're looking at real figures. I mean, the very quick example that I can give you is an example. Chamisa was nowhere when they started. He didn't even, he didn't even have 1%. But by the time they counted, after the elections, it was at 44%. Now, we're sitting with an EFF now, which is around 11%, 12% as things stand. We, and we're sitting with Ipsos saying, uh, as we sit here and now, we've already overtaken the DA, which is at around 20-something percent. 22%. We've already overtaken the This is fact from uh, uh, Ipsos. We've already yeah. overtaken the DA. So therefore, the only horse that we're facing now is the ANC. So for us as the EFF right now, we're not even considering any coalition. We're looking at taking over this government on our own. We think that uh, and we know that we're going to beat the ANC. Uh, they're not going to have KZN. They're not going to have Gauteng. They're not going to have Mpumalanga. So as, as, as soon as all those three provinces, they dip on those, therefore they're not going to get the national number. And that's where the EFF is going to come in because we're going to take over Gauteng, we're going to take over KZN, we're going to take over Mpumalanga and a few other provinces. So the, key, the, the EFF is, is indeed a ready-to-govern organization. This is why even our manifesto is a very serious manifesto, 265 pages. We've gone into detail. It's not just some highfalutin stuff. Mm. Going into details to show that uh, each and every government department will know what we're going to do when we get there uh, in a couple of months' time. I mean, I, I was about to come to that question of, you know, coalitions and other things. I mean, you've been working with the ANC in Gauteng, various municipalities. Now you're saying you're ready to govern. I understand that. So there are no any, uh, I mean, any talks that are going to happen uh, as we are heading to the elections. I mean, I mean, we, we know the latest polls are saying that the ANC is going to dip below um, 50. Maybe they might even go below 40. Uh, but I want to understand this. Since you have established a working relationship with them, isn't it, uh, you know, better to have them as, uh, you know, partners uh, 
uh, to govern so that you can be able to police them also. Before that, let's make sure firstly that you've got the numbers right. 2021 government elections, the, the IEC, uh, which is a credible organization, has already reported what the numbers look like yeah. for local government. The ANC, uh, they uh, scored 45.6%. So the issue of 50% has long become, a, of below 50%, has long become a reality for the ANC. Now we've got all these other parties, MK party, that yeah. is focusing on them as well, yeah, and all of that. So therefore, I sit here now, I think the ANC is going to be around 30%. That's what the ANC is going to get. So there's no watching over the ANC. There's going to be the EFF that's going to be taking over. The ANC will be relegated to the opposition benches. That's what's going to happen to the ANC. So there is no deal that we are considering with the ANC. No, the EFF is going to take over this government on its own. This guy, uh, uh, Stian Hazen, mm. the reason he's chasing Paul like this is because he knows that uh, the ANC is going to lose so the ANC and the DA, they might just form a coalition. That is what, that's the only coalition. So if you vote for the ANC, you must know, sitting there in Soto, that you vote for the ANC is a vote for the DA. So it's a vote for oppression. So we want to say to the people of this country, we want to say to Sowetans, if you want apartheid to be back, vote for the ANC, because the ANC will introduce the apartheid via their DA. So it's a very deadly combination uh, for us in, in Soweto. So we don't want anything to do with that. This is why the EFF is the best vehicle to take us forward. As we wrap up the conversation, what is the plan now? We are heading to the elections. Uh, are the forces on the ground, uh, you know, uh, are people welcoming you in their homes? They're understanding the message of the EFF. What is it? What is that message that you want to give to people uh -huh. out there? Uh, as now they are contemplating where to go in terms of getting that vote. Yeah, no, firstly, I mean, you can even look at the stadiums uh, as, a, as an indicator. To fill up FNB, though, it's only the, 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 the EFF that could do this. Uh, ANC, the last time they filled the FNB, it was long ago, not now. Right now, they'll never embarrass themselves. In the, that's why they will go to a Dobsonville Stadium and all these other small places, uh, as it were. So even at Mabida, they will, they will take the entire country there. For us, it was just the case at end people. So indeed, we think we are being warmly, warmly received because the EFF's message is very clear. We want to give our people land. We're not going to have a situation where people are, 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 are pressed into some little corner, uh, not a view. We want to remove Stuetla in Alex, as an example, uh, where people are living next to the river eradicate that whole thing and make sure that that area is free of people and people are built decent houses elsewhere and, and, and in various other areas as well. So the EFF is not going to, the EFF is not going to formalize the informal settlements. No, we want to build new houses, proper houses for people, decent houses for, for people with a toilet inside. Not this nonsense that we find uh, where the ANC is formalizing in, uh, uh, these uh, settlements, they put all kinds of uh, bucket system. How, how, how degrading can uh, 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 people be? So we're not going to do those funny things. We're going to build proper houses, toilet inside and everything because we, we respect the dignity of our people. Mr. Man, you much appreciated. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. There's quite a lot that we wanted to talk about, but we will definitely invite you on the show again. Much appreciated. You're welcome. EFF is a big organization. You must set out an hour. An hour. Yeah. <laughs> That's EFF Member of Parliament there just talking to us, you know, helping us unpack the party's 2024 election manifesto and what are some of the policies of the EFF, uh, you know, the plans on implementing them uh, are going to look like. Uh, you know, as we know that South Africa is heading to the elections uh, sometime. There's uh, quite a lot of commitments there. He said to me that, look, these are not promises. These are commitments. Graduates fund um, the 9,000, um, I mean, 9 uh, million jobs there, you know, ending load shedding, quite a lot. Education, social assistance, increased grants, and the issues of early childhood development, they also touched on them. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email, it's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. You can simply call us at 081 531
Five seven. Bye, it's your dear. Holy Kani from myself and the rest of the team. Good night and thank you for watching.